Hey guys, Sabri Subi here, and in today's video, I'm gonna be talking to you about the single most important element to all of your marketing, and that is your offer and more specifically in crafting what I call a godfather offer. Because you know, the biggest mistake that I see businesses face is you know, they get their funnels live, they do their copy, they get their ads live on Facebook and Google, and then they send it out into the market and they get eaten alive. Or they get a small bit of success, but then the moment that they try to scale things up, everything shits the bed and it comes down crashing and burning. And that is really because their offer isn't correct. You see, your offer, it is the tip of the spear. And it's from where everything else stems from. And if you don't get the offer right, then you can't get the copyright and you can't get the traffic right because everything is really rested on your ability to convert strangers and then turn them into high paying clients. And the way that you do that is by having an offer that is just so white hot, so irresistible that your prospects can't refuse it and only a lunatic would refuse the offer that you're making. And the very first step in crafting what I call a godfather offer, before you get into like the weeds of what the pricing should be, what you should be giving in exchange for that price and all of those things, you really need to go and gather what I call the raw materials. And the raw materials is basically everything that's going on in your market to find out where the bullseye is. Okay, so every single market has a bullseye and that is the center of the center of the center of what people really want, what really motivates them to pull out their wallet and their credit card and buy emotionally, irrationally and in huge, huge quantities. And the biggest area that I see people falling flat on is that they craft an offer that doesn't hit the bullseye. And you can craft a really, really good offer, right? But if that's on one of the outer rings of the bullseye and it's not dead in the center, you're just not going to get the lift off that you want and everything's going to be higher your cost per lead your cost to acquire a customer and your return on your ad spend so the way that you do that is by first selling what it is that people want and that sounds so simple right and so elementary yet so many people don't do it so the way that you want to do that is by going out there and gathering intel and really just camping out in the minds of your buyers so you can pump your offers up on steroids and you want to go and really start to put all these raw materials together and the way that we do that is by putting together something that we call a details list and in one column of that list you're going to have all of the features of what it is that you're selling and then in the next column you're going to have all the benefits that correspond with those features and you're going to list them all out and you really want to go through the tiresome effort of making sure that you list out every single feature and then all of the benefits that are really attributed to those features and these are the simple things these are the building blocks right and you might be like oh, I've done all this before Sabri or like this all sounds elementary just show me like the the shiny chat bottle, this ninja funnel. Stay with me because this is how you get your offers to strike like lightning. And once you get these raw materials and all of this stuff in place, then everything else almost just does the work for itself. The copy is easier to write. The ads just explode when you send them live. So just stay with me and go through this whole exercise because it's an incredibly lucrative one. Now, once you've gotten all of those features and all of those benefits from you know, your products and services that you're selling, now this is where you need to really transition to the next level, okay? Because what most business owners and marketers are, they are simply product sellers, right? They look at their features and benefits and they're like, this is what I've got, so let me just go and sell my wares. And they craft all of their copy and all of their offers around what it is that they currently have to sell and they stop right there and that is really a failing approach to getting a godfather offer because what you want to do 
is sell what people want, not what it is that you have to sell. And what I mean specifically by that is if you go and do the research in your market, right, and you go to forums, you go to Facebook groups, you read reviews on Amazon, um, you look at the one star reviews, you look at the five star reviews where what people are saying are missing from their products, what they love about the products. You go to Reddit forums and you go trawling through all of those Reddits and you read everything that those people are saying. And then once you find out what it is that really sets your market's soul on fire and really motivates them to buy, then you want to look at that and compare it to your features and benefits list. And instead of just trying to pigeonhole what you've got and shoehorn it into your market, you want to have a look at adding and creating other products that are completely in line with what it is that your market is starving for, right? And the, when you do that, your conversion rates from lead to sale will also go up dramatically. And what you'll find is that, you know, you're really crafting an offer that just melts through your market like a hot knife does to butter. And it will make everything that you're doing infinitely more profitable. So to kind of reiterate, like most people are product Product sellers. They go, this is what I've got to sell. Let me go and sell it. They don't go out to the market and go, what is the market absolutely starving for? Now let me create a product or service that delivers and gives them exactly what it is that they're starving for, that answers their most burning hair on fire problems, that provides an immediate solution to this pressing problem that they're experiencing so that they're a very motivated buyer. And that's exactly what it is that we want to sell. We don't want to sell just what we've got and stop there. We want to take it up a level by looking at first what that market does and what that market wants and what's keeping them up at night and what do they enjoy about the existing products that are on the market and what don't they like about it and where is that kind of shortfall in between where you can position your offer to just go out there and beat the pants off your competition. And this brings us to step two, and this is a really crucial part that you really need to check your ego, leave it in the door as a business owner and as a business builder if you wanna get the most cut through you can. And you need to do something that I call pivoting to bullseye market hit, BMH. And you need to pivot your offer until you do hit the absolute bullseye of your market. And that's not being like, well, my product or service doesn't really deliver on that or it can't do that. So I'm just gonna try to pedal this crap and try and force it down the mouth of my market rather than giving them exactly what it is that they want. So you need to be liquid and fluid. You need to be able to change your offer, scrap things, start from scratch, add things on, splinter, maybe just a part of your service off that really delivers specifically and hits that bullseye of your market because that bullseye exists and it doesn't matter if you hit it with a rubber mallet or if you hit it with you know a completely pistol point 50 caliber bullet dead in the center. You just need to hit that thing. And most people don't. They're way on the outside of that bullseye and they're never really striking that center. And if you go through the laborious process of crafting an offer that people really, really want and that are irresistible to them and it hits that bullseye, then everything else that you're gonna do is gonna become much, much easier rather than let me just take the easy way out with my offer and then everything else is much more difficult and it never really scales and you never really get the success that you want. Because understand this, a compelling offer is infinitely more powerful than a convincing argument. So you don't wanna be in a situation where you are trying to convince people to take the action that you want them to, where you're trying to get them, convince them to raise their hand in a sea of people as being interested in what it is that you have for sale or in pulling out their credit card and in buying or in booking a time in on your calendar and speaking to you. You want to be in a position where your offer is so compelling that it just sucks people into the jet stream and you become magnetic in your market and people just gravitate towards you because your offer is so compelling. When you break down an offer to you know, its first principles, there's really just two parts to it. And the first part is, is you know, what is it that your market wants? 
And the second thing is, what is it that they need to do in order to get it, right? What are we offering? And then what are we asking them to do to get that offer? What are we charging? What are the deliverables for them to actually obtain the solution to their burning problem? So let's look at the first step, right? What is it that they want? So you need to really think about it by doing the research that I've told you to do and looking in the forums and looking at reviews and looking at YouTube comments and Reddit and all of those kind of things and really just putting down what is it that your market is absolutely starving for. And then what you want to do is you want to reduce it down to writing and you want to forget about your lawyers, you want to forget about all the legal requirements that you need to fulfill in the industry that you offer operate in. No one's going to see this offer right now except for you. And you want to reduce it down to writing and you want to turn up the volume on this puppy. You want to think about what is a dream come true experience for your prospect. Like if you had a magic wand and you could just wave it and you could basically grant a wish to your prospect, what would that wish look like? What is it they would absolutely crawl over crushed glass to get to? And that's where you want to start. You want to start from a place of power and having an offer with balls on it. You don't want to start where most people do. It's like, well, what can I fulfill on? So write it down, reduce it to write it. And then I want you to turn up the volume and make it even louder and make it even more enticing and more irresistible. Forget about the delivery component of this just yet. We're going to get to that. Once you've got that down and you just think, you look at it and it should be like, holy shit, like that is a really compelling offer. Like if I was in the market for this, I would have no choice but to take them up on this offer. Then what you want to do is you want to slowly pull that back and wind it down a little bit, wind down the volume on something that you would actually be able to deliver on and that is not going to get you into a whole bunch of hot water legally or any problems or any implications like that. And that is where you start with your offer. You're starting with that position of power. Now, the next step is understanding that you know, in any exchange with you and your market, there is risk present. In all transaction, there are risks present. And what most people do is they ask their prospect and their customer to burden all of that risk. And they want to sit back there as the marketer or as the business owner and really just relinquish all responsibility and not burden any of that risk. Now, while that might make you feel comfortable, that's going to end up with a lot less money in your merchant account because people aren't just going to buy in the huge quantities that you could be getting if you burdened that risk and you wore all of that and made that offer way more compelling for your prospect. Because I have a saying, right? If the offer doesn't keep the founder up at night, then it simply isn't strong enough. Because you need to understand the dynamics that are present in all transactions. And you know, either you're gonna burden a much higher customer acquisition cost by not burdening the risk, right? Or you're going to have a much lower customer acquisition cost by you reversing the risk and you burdening that. So, you know, no matter way that you look at it, by burdening that risk, you are going to win. You're going to get more customers, your cost per lead, your customer acquisition cost is going to go through the floor and all of your marketing endeavors are going to be infinitely more profitable. So that is why you want to burden the risk. Now we're going to break down the seven parts that make up a Godfather offer. So the first one is rationale. So why is it that we're even offering this ridiculous deal? We can't just put a ridiculous deal out there and then not give any of the backstory or any of the rationale about why we are doing this. And unless you do that, you know, what's going to happen is there's going to be this voice in the back of your prospect's head that's just like, why, why, why? Like, why are they making such a ridiculous offer? So you really want to provide context. Like we're doing this because we've accidentally ordered all this extra inventory. It's all in our warehouse and we've got to get it going, right? Or, you know, if you're getting leads and you're converting those leads into customers is just being very transparent and just being like, the reason that we do this is because this is the process that you know prospects go through and they're usually so impressed by this whole thing that they actually ask to become a client. But whether or not you become a client is completely fine. There's no pressure for you to buy, but this is the reason why we are doing this, right? So you always need to provide that rationale. You can't just make your offer so compelling because it's 
still needs to answer why you're even doing that in the first place. Now, the next thing is to build value around whatever it is that you're doing. If you're selling direct and you're trying to get e-commerce transactions, then you need to build the value of what it is that you're selling. You need to put on what the regular RRP price is. You need to break down all the different parts of that offer and you need to assign a value to that and then show them the deal that they're getting, which is just a pittance of what the real value is, right? Now, if you're selling a service and you involve getting people on the telephone in order to convert those leads into actual customers, then you need to build value around that consultation. You can't just do what everyone else does and say, get a free 30 minute strategy session or get a, three, a free 30 minute consultation. There needs to be value built up around that. You need to have the bullet points of what they're gonna get on this call whether or not they choose to buy from you and really build like a value and a price around what that call would cost if someone was just gonna consult with you on an hourly rate or at a 30 minute rate and really build up that value even if it's free. That's the big thing that people don't understand. Well, this is free, you know, Subri, I can't build the value. Yes, you definitely can. You need to put a value attached to what it would cost if it wasn't free. And the third step is pricing. And in pricing, really, you know, the approach that I like to take is really to charge just 10% of the total value of what something is worth. So when you're presenting your price, it really comes across as an absolute no brainer. And it's also a good way for you to deliver on your promises. So you really wanna look at, okay, what is this problem that I'm trying to solve? And how big of a problem is it? And how much is it worth to that person to solve that problem. And then you wanna present your pricing in a way where it just looks ridiculous, where it's like, of course I would pay that to get to solve this big problem. This is just a pittance to this huge burning problem that I'm trying to solve right now. You never wanna think about like, what is the actual like constituent parts? What are the raw materials cost of what it is that you're selling and what it is that you're charging, but you wanna think of value-based pricing and what is the value that someone gets and how big is the problem that you're trying to solve for that prospect. And now the fifth element of a Godfather offer is premiums. So premiums is just like an added bonus that you give away when somebody takes you up on your offer. So say for instance, if you're trying to generate strategy sessions, get people on the telephone, you know, a premium that you can offer is when they book in a call, they get a free report of the six things that they need to do to radically scale their Facebook ads, right? Or if you're selling juices, you might be giving them, you know, a 21 day detox ebook that comes along with that or whatever it is that they want. Physical premiums work fantastic, whether you're giving away a free book or a booklet or a course or something along those lines, adding premiums work like crazy. There's a reason that you see all huge advertisers, anyone that's advertising with any real force out in the marketplace, they'll always have these premiums added to them and it's because it just pulls up the response rate from all of your advertising. Try them, give them a go and let me know how you go. Now, the sixth element is a power guarantee. So it's not just enough to have a ridiculously strong offer, right? You can't just like, you know, trivialize the price, make it look all like incredible value and then just think that people are gonna buy. We need to have a guarantee. We need to reverse that risk that is present in your marketplace. Now, when I tell this to most people, they're like, yeah, look, you know, I'm just not comfortable giving a guarantee, like what about the scammers? Like aren't they just gonna game this guarantee and like I'll go broke, right? That's the first thing that people think. Well, th the thing is, right, everyone, whether they like it or not, typically has a guarantee. And what do I mean by that? Well, it, by law in most countries, you know, you have to, by consumer law, have like some kind of 12 month guarantee where it's like your product doesn't deliver on what you say in your advertising, then you need to basically work with that customer or provide them a refund. So whether you like it or not, you know, it's, it's already baked into whatever it is that you're selling, right? That's one element to it. And the second element is that if a customer came to you and they weren't happy, what would you do? 
right? Would you just say like, no, screw you, like you've already paid, goodbye? Or would you work with them and support them and try to get to a place where they are happy and they will speak nicely about you and you will get more customers as a result of that in the future? You know, I'm gonna guess that you're a reasonable person and you are gonna work with them. So if it's by law and you would already do it, then why not advertise it and just get way more people into your business in seeing your offers, in being customers, in parting with their hard earned money and starting that relationship with you because the answer is that you should be, right? And when you do that, you'll notice you'll get a lot more people responding to your offers, taking you up because what you're doing is you're reducing that risk and saying like, yo, like if this doesn't work for you, you know, I'm going to be more than happy to give your money back. If you're feeling very aggressive, you can offer a money, a double your money back guarantee. They work like crazy as well. But just look at ways that you can engineer reversing the risk for your prospect and you will win like absolutely crazy. And last but not least is the seventh final point and that is scarcity, right? Scarcity, it just works, right? Whether you like it or not, no matter what offers that have scarcity, they just outpull offers that don't. So you need to look at adding scarcity to your offers in a way that sits right with you, that is real, right? Not fake scarcity um, because people find that out, that stuff out very, very quickly and you really need to have that scarcity baked into your offer because that's the thing that motivates people to take action, right? It's that fear of loss, it's that fear of missing out on this ridiculous offer that you've just made them. So good examples of doing this is, again, if you're generating leads, you're getting strategy sessions, you're getting people on the calendar, I'll just say that it's just you in the business, right? And maybe that you've dedicated four hours a day to taking sales calls. You can really only take four or five sales calls and then there's there's no more spots. That is a real constraint. That is real scarcity, right? And if you're good at marketing, you'll probably be put into a situation where you are booked out for a week, two, three weeks in advance. So that is real scarcity. You know, you book in your call right now because these spots go really quickly. And actually I have been fully booked for the last seven days. That's real. There's scarcity to it. And it also prompts people to act now. If you're selling a physical good, you know, there are only X amount left in the warehouse. We can only keep doing this price so long because this is an introductory price, right? Again, this stuff needs to be real, right? There needs to be a certain amount of products in your warehouse, which I assume that there is, right? So just look at ways that you can bake that scarcity in there that gives that person that last kick that they need to actually take you up on your offer. So now that we've covered what a godfather is, let's talk about what it's not, right? A godfather offer is not great customer service. It's not outstanding quality. It's not being innovative or having a great team or being responsive to your customers' needs or even having a great reputation, right? They're just things that we're gonna assume that you have in your business, but they alone are not a godfather offer where that's how most people make their offers. Like, you know, do business with us. We've got the biggest range. We've got the best prices or do business with us because we've been in business since 1982. No one gives a shit about any of that stuff, right? You've got to make these people compelling offers that get them to act. Stop resting on those things that are just normal, fundamental, vanilla things that every business should have in order to be transacting with the marketplace. And instead, use these seven parts and really craft an offer that gets people to sit up in their chair and it raises the hairs on the back of their neck and it demands their attention. And more importantly, it gets them to buy in huge quantities, emotionally, irrationally, and just with a huge surge of activity into your marketplace. So if you go ahead and you do those things, every single element of your marketing will be infinitely more powerful. So there you have it. That's how you craft an irresistible godfather offer. Now, if you liked this video, this is just one of the phases from my best-selling book, Sell Like Crazy. Inside this thing, I go through the other seven phases. It's an eight-phase secret selling system that we have now deployed in over 416 different markets to generate over $1.33 billion in sales. And in Inside it, I give you all the checklists, the swipe files, and everything that you need to do to get a selling system up and running regardless of what the niche is that you operate in to go out there and sell like crazy. 
Now, if you're watching this video, that means that we are still sending these books out for free anywhere in the world. All we ask is that you help us out with the shipping and handling, and we will get it out to you within the next 24 to 48 hours, regardless of where you live. And you can go out there and deploy this thing and just go out there and create offers, create a selling system from the beginning to going out there and getting attention of your marketplace, to getting them to raise their hand in a sea of people and being like, yo, I am interested in what it is that you've got to sell. And then getting them to jump on a call with you or to transact with you and become a high paying client. And this is a process that we have deployed in every single niche that you can pretty much think of. So regardless of where you are in your business, if you're just at the beginning and you're kind of pre-revenue, or if you're going, you're in the car, it's already moving, or you're doing multiple millions, I'm very confident this will help you get to the next level. So if you're interested in taking us up on this offer, simply click on the link below and we'll get this thing out to you as soon as possible.